What's going on, motherfuckers? Welcome to the Crocs and Hot Pockets podcast. My name is Knackers, and today is Sunday, April 18th, 2020. And this is episode number 146. Tonight on the podcast, we have Middle Age Stream and Bishop GP. What's going on, Jimmy? Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? I, hello, I'm good. Sweet. How are you, man? What's goody, Jimmy? Bishop! I don't know what's happening around here. <laughs> what up, boys? Dude, Almost... hey, Knackers, you're excited today, man. Your energy level yeah. is tip top. Wow. You got your pink hat on. You got your sunglasses, little glasses, whatever those things are. They look great. You got your 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 nice little headset, man. You, you look you look great. They're my they're my gunner blue light blockers for all of my mm. extended gaming sessions that I do. Hell yeah. Uh, hey, by the way, your uh, your output gain is a little a little low. You're a little on the quiet low? side. You want me to turn? You want me to uh, spice it up? Just yeah, give, give me give me some a little bit of that output. Yeah, gain. well, let's peak it out a little bit. Little, let's uh, let's little, keep it. Let's keep it real. Let's go. Let's go yeah. max peakage. My uh, my boy uh, Jimmy was just uh, complimenting me on how my mic wasn't peaking. Ah, so this it, is yeah. It Would was a little, a little peaky. Test? Should I do a little test? A little ah, a little yeah. ah, uh, skirt. Uh, rip, uh, rip. Perfect. We're good. Yeah. Sounds good. Right, we're good. Okay. Good. Good. Oh. Good. Yeah. Uh, um. You know what I was thinking the other day? What were you thinking the other day? Absolutely nothing. I was just trying to fill that dead air. Uh, Jimmy, what are you drinking tonight? Yo. So I've got <laughs> a little side thing. Let me tell you about this. This beer is wild. I saw it at the grocery store on wow. Friday, and it came in a four pack. It's called a Puff Tart XL. A Puff okay. Fart? Ooh. Puff Tart. I thought, you, I thought you said fart when no, no, no. the Puff thing started. Tart. Puff Tart. I thought you were eating a can of farts, man. And so it is a, and then on the cover it says, Strawberry Pineapple Dragon Fruit. Mm. It's from the brewing, it's from the brewing project. It is an imperial sour ale with pineapple, strawberry, dragon fruit, and vanilla. And it is potent because it is a imperial sour, which means it is like over eight percent ABV. Um, mm. But it is good; like it's actually pretty tasty. Like I like it. I've never heard imperial without stout following immediately after. What is an imperial that is not a stout? Imperial like is a measure of like alcohol content. So if you pass a certain threshold, it's an imperial. Ooh. Oh damn! Okay. Mm-hmm. So like bam, when you bam, hear bam. an imperial stout, it's past a certain threshold for alcohol. And like when you hear like an imperial, a double imperial, like you have those double imperial IPAs, for example, those are usually like really high ABV. That's see, I knew the rebels were pussies. All always drinking the that like fucking one percent, two percent ABV, that Bud Light, that Natty Ice. Oh my well, like, god! Like I think, I think uh, a typical domestic is somewhere in the high fours or low fives. I want to say it's like four eight or five two for a like a Bud Light or something. Okay. Yeah, I think it's something like that. If you let's say you go to a bar and their options are uh, Bud Light. Mm-hmm. Budweiser mm-hmm. and Miller Lite. Are mm-hmm. you in the wrong so- place? <laughs> yeah, He's definitely in the I'm wrong place. I'm probably going to turn around and walk out the <laughs> yeah. door unless there's no other bar in the area. You stepped into the fucking wrong <laughs> wedding there, brother. <laughs> so we would have to be under the assumption that this is literally the only place I can get a beer, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Let Let's just say it's it's like two o'clock in the a.m. Uh-huh. We, we're done with our Bible study. We've knocked on plenty of doors, and now it's time to let let loose. Will you ask for vodka, or are you okay with having one of those brews? I would probably ask for vodka. Damn! I mean, well, it just depends on what I'm doing, I guess. But if it's like, yeah, yeah, I, I really... The only time I would want to drink domestic beer is if it's super fucking cold and it's super hot outside like that's the only time i really enjoy those types of beers um if it's a lager which most of those types of beers are i think those beers are best enjoyed when it's a hot day in the summer and you have uh, a little bit of sweat on your brow then it's a more enjoyable beer because it tastes like water (laughs) so (laughs) that it does that's my opinion on lagers and domestics i'm not hating for people that like to drink them year-round so you're I basically just prefer, saying 
that is if you were the only time you're going to have one is if you're in the middle of a desert. And at that point, like it's a survival thing. So you're you're not actually drinking it because it's beer. You're drinking it because it's cold and it's a liquid. Well, where would you find a cold beer in the middle of the desert, though? A cold beer a stand. Mirage. Yeah, exactly. that too. But I mean, if there was a cold beer stand in the desert, then you're safe. Because then you just ask the driver to get you out of there. Like, hey, yeah, man. But what if he's you... stuck there with this cold? Well, where beer would he get the cold beer from? Space. He's, just, he's trying to find a crowd, and he. You guys make up the most the ridiculous <laughs> situations. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, you know, I was um I was surprised that you said you'd ask for vodka because I would drink any of those. And you just brought up a f- funny thing about being in the desert. I had a gentleman that I used to work with and we went to the casino. The only time that I've ever gone out with somebody from work at this current job and we did it once, haven't done it again since. And he's like, "So you know what my trick is?" He goes, "When I'm out on the boat, I just get a big glass and I fill it all the way to the top with ice, and then I pour Bud Light, and I fill up the glass. So when I'm drinking, I'm staying hydrated because the ice is melting, and it's like, you can't water down water, so it's not that big of a deal. And mm-hmm. he's like, I get plastered, I get to be on a boat, and I stay hydrated. I'm totally fine the next day. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this man's a genius. Have There's some tried- definite pros and cons, because if you're only drinking, like... I mean, the truth is, if you're drinking more than a couple of drinks you should be having a glass or more of water in between like if you don't want to have a hangover the next day i mean once you pass a certain age like i don't even want to say like i didn't have hangovers before i just i think i got to the point where i used to be able to sleep them off you know what i mean Mm -hmm. sure and then when you get past a certain age you can't sleep them off anymore and you're like oh man so were you ever that guy that was like oh i never get hangovers i'm good and then finally, you have like that day that you wake up, you're like, oh, fuck, this is a hangover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, shit. I think that that happened to me. And then you're like, you're like, oh, I'm never drinking again until the next weekend. <laughs> yeah, you know? you're like, that was fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Uh oh, yeah. fill the air. Right. I need to check something. Yeah. All right, you check something. Um, so, um, yeah, speaking of uh, hangovers, man, uh, mm-hmm. I actually haven't ha- been drunk in a very long time. Like, since good. I was like maybe like four years or three years, three years. It's not good to get like just hammered, wasted all the time for sure. I mean, don't get me yeah, wrong. It's a nice I time. sometimes get a little tipsy, yeah. but I try not to get past the point of where I'm going to feel like shit, total shit the next day. If I'm, you know, um, I try and cut myself off and I, I do, I have made it a habit to drink a lot more water, uh, now than ever yeah, yeah. before. Yeah. Um, so it makes you know, a difference. One of the best experiences about turning 21 is the realization that you don't know how drunk you are at a bar until you go in the bathroom. And then you're standing mm. there like, whoa. And you're there with yourself, like in your own head. You're just like, whoa, man. I'm, you're kind of swaying man. in front yeah. of the, like, like unintentionally oh shit, swaying in front of the urinal. <laughs> that yeah, it's like is, being on a boat. That is amplified by 10 on certain bathtub recreational substances. Like oh, when you I'm sure, when you yeah. go into the bathroom and the and that swinging door finally makes contact with the door jam and it's a little bit mm-hmm. quieter and then all you hear is like the grunting of dudes pissing out urine through their yeah. tight little pee holes and mm-hmm. some broad getting banged in one of this one of the stalls and you're just like oh man yeah. everyone is being oddly less private than they normally be you know what I mean like people are talking in the bathroom too there's like some guys like talking back and forth while they're pissing which isn't like doesn't happen normally you know what doesn't also happen you know what happens in girls bathrooms that doesn't happen in guys bathrooms the Mm. insane positive reinforcement of each other like oh my god you're fucking killing that dress christina (laughs) you look fucking gorgeous and then you walk into the boys bathroom it's like don't stare at my dick get away looking at my dick whatever dude every freaking men's bathroom i've been into at, at like a bar or a club or something which i don't frequent very often i should mention anymore but when i did uh frequent bars frequently see what i did there uh (laughs) i i don't think i ever heard any talking in the bathroom like it was always men just go in and i mean the bathrooms i was going to maybe that maybe you went to a different type of joint than i was going to man (laughs) different type of place there was no talking in the men's bathroom where i was going it was just you go in and you handle business and you get out dude there ain't no, there ain't no social time, dude. What kind of, kind of, 
What kind of places are you going to, huh? The bars I went to, the the bathroom was the place to be, okay? (laughs) There's a guy sitting in a corner. There's a guy sitting in a corner with, like, a pack of mints that he's trying to sell you. There ain't no no tech talking going on. Now, I have been to some places where they have the dude. I always feel bad for the bathroom attendant. I hate that guy, man. He He makes me feel weird. He does make me feel weird. I'm like, okay, dude, seriously, I just washed my hands. I don't need any of your cologne. I don't need a mint or a piece of gum. Um... Please just leave me alone. I don't But you know what? Imagine need needing those things, right? But so you say might. you're out on you yeah, might. You might. Need them. So say your breath stinks and you you're mm-hmm. you're conscious of this and there's mm-hmm. a girl you want to talk to and you're like, fuck, what do I do? You don't want to leave the bar and then have to wait back in that line and then you sober up and she's talking to someone else. <laughs> this you go is and talk true. To this some is guy. true. But this is where yeah. you have to have foresight and realize if you have bad breath, mm-hmm. fix it before you get into that situation not relying yeah. on a bathroom attendant to solve Somebody all your that ails is forced to stay in the bathroom yes his job what a is terrible job in the bathroom <laughs> the, the other terrible part about the bathroom attendant job yeah. uh i see and i feel terrible for them i've seen somebody go in and they're like get the cologne they get whatever and mm-hmm. they won't leave a tip or anything they just fucking walk out yeah. and i'm like what a dick. You just made that guy freaking give you some of that cologne and piece of gum and you just left without even a freaking <laughs> dollar? The What an ass. The Detroit bathroom jockeys take it even a Man. step further to where they will force you to take the paper towel from the person that's mm-hmm. there and yeah. they don't fill they don't fill the paper they towel. Take it out. Yeah. They take it out. So they you take, have to go to them. Yeah, yep. not only that, yeah. But they also have this, they stand near the sink with the soap. So if maybe you want, they're trying to make sure that they don't abuse paper towels. Absolutely not. No, there's yeah. no way. There's too much paper towel consumption going on in Detroit, dude. So they have to have someone hold them to make sure someone's <laughs> going to steal them all. And then that's it's like what the real issue is. If you say no to the soap, then that guy knows that you're the dude that walked out without washing his hands. Yeah. And then if you yeah. go back and you're like, oh, I'll have they soap now. Like, make nope. it to where you are re- dependent on someone else to use soap and freaking towels. Dude, I agree. The, they I literally agree. remove the soap from the pumps and yeah. take all of the paper towel out of the, ro- the rack. Is, so you have to not, get it from the guy. That is not good. And like, that, you're like, you're like hanging over, like you're over the sink, like washing your hands. And the guy like comes in with a little soap container. And he's like, I hate, I have actually had. Okay, so imagine this. I want you just to visualize this because it's way yeah. funnier if you visualize this. All right. Okay. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do this. <laughs> he's For the other listeners, he's backing up. He's standing up. Okay. So this is a... Imagine the camera is like the mirror in a bathroom. Okay. Yeah. And I have to okay, play yeah, two yeah. roles here. I have to play two roles because there's okay. only one of me. So this is me in the bathroom at a... Uh, uh, I don't know, a club or somewhere. That's some nice place that has a bathroom attendant in it, right? I'm washing my hands, whatever. Okay. All right. Now... This is the bathroom attendant. (laughs) (laughs) He wants you to make the eye contact. He's baiting you. He's he's baiting you into looking over this way. He gets like right up his face. I'm like, dude, your face is next to my hands that I'm washing. (laughs) I'm telling you. They they have the little soap dispenser and they literally are like hanging over the countertop, just like Jimmy illustrated. And they're trying, they they want to put the soap like you have your hands and you're washing, yeah. And they're putting the soap into the sink with your hands. It's just and, creepy, dude. It's like weird, there's, man. I, it, I think you have to kind and, and I apologize if there's any bathroom attendants in the audience listening yeah, to this. this. Chat's filled with them. I'm just really <laughs> sorry. I have never met a bathroom attendant in my life that I didn't think was kind of weird or That's, really uh, weird. The fact that you, the fact that he tried to make eye contact through the mirror first mm-hmm. and then got a little bit closer, that takes it to a whole yeah. new level. It was, it was. <laughs> you can see, thing- like, I like, I'm like, out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, is that guy? This dude, he's moving in yeah. close to he's my getting hands. Close. He wants he's to coming. Do sync with me, man. He wants a tandem. Really sync odd. Right now. I'm sorry. All right, where are we? Where are we going? Uh, no, B- this is, Bishop's yeah. good. Bishop's got yeah. drinks. Yeah, we, we got. Uh, I, I have okay, so Casey, um, I, I have a beautiful little bang energy. I've been actually enjoying these. You can get them on Amazon for a good deal. Is it so a mukbang of, energy? Uh, no, no mukbang. It is when uh, you're on stream. I mean, we could mukbang it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I need a hot tub. I think that that meta is dead now. So yeah. it definitely um, is. But Casey yeah. just made some cookies, little chocolate chip and pecan. Oh, no. nice. nice. So those are pistachio. I, I can't remember. I'll have to eat one to see. But they're really good. I had a bite. <laughs> 
I, I see you, you you also got a a uh, your ears lowered for an appetizer. Um that means haircut. Oh yeah. I oh, cut my own hair. Dude, yesterday. that is so old fashioned. Wow, <laughs> yeah. look at you. You must have learned I, I, that from your parents. Dude, uh, I'm so no, I'm so lazy that like um uh, every day I wake up and I'm like, "Hey, I'm going to get my haircut today." Don't call the people. And they they it's literally like a block away from where I live. I walk there. And uh I was like, I, I keep wanting to schedule it and then I don't do it. And then uh, Casey for Christmas bought me because I have like um, during COVID, right? Everyone started cutting their own hair to some extent because they didn't they couldn't go to the hairdresser. Right. Everyone's had that experience or some sort of trimming that they've had to do that regularly they go to someone to do. Um, and uh, Casey, I asked her to cut my hair over co- the, you know, the height of COVID and uh, the clippers, both sets of them that I had were actual dog shit. So like, let's say like 60% of the the pass, it would miss, or like of through the whole pass, it would miss 60% of the hair. So she'd have to go back over it like 10, 15 times and it would just look butchered at the end. Um, or unless she spent like 30 minutes just going over the same area, then it would finally come through. So she bought me a new set of clippers for Christmas as kind of like a joke in that like I didn't have one that worked to cut my hair. And uh, the other day I took a shower yesterday, I took a shower and I was just sitting there and looking at myself in the mirror and it was all like patchy. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. Let's just do it. So I used the the shears or clippers she bought me. It actually worked pretty well. It didn't take that long. Uh, I didn't fuck it up that bad, but let's do a little, little 360. You guys can be the judge. Dude, so, it, you've got like only the, the headset is squashing the back of your head and then it's all just fraying out the front. Yeah, you did good. I got, I must say, I'm impressed. See that? You guys see the back? Yeah. It's, not too it's, bad, a little, right? it's a little it's a little top heavy. You know, you could probably even it out a little more, but it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to take a stab at doing the top because I have yeah. no fucking clue what I was doing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. no, but that's, like, that's uh, way better than I could have done. I can tell dude, you. Dude, I, I see here's the thing. As someone that's like really hyper focused, no matter what I'm doing in the moment, like I'm super ADD, but I'm whenever I get my haircut, I just watch the person do it over and over again. So all I did was replicate what they did and uh I don't know. Hey, it kind of works. Did okay. The, that Reddit meme. Remember that Reddit meme of me that was posted uh, during? I think that was which like, one? Uh, February. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah, so uh, that when that picture was taken, I was cutting my hair because I was broke, and it looked like actual dog shit. And I feel like I'm improving. I'm like getting better at cutting my own hair, man. So knackers, maybe one day you can come over, and I'll I'll. Uh... Yeah, are you gonna dress my pubes, nice. or are you gonna let me shave your head? Like bald you? No, no, I'm balding you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you over. Nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like the lather on your head, right? It's too I'm gonna late. do like the soapy lather and then shave. Oh, you're your gonna, head. you're gonna shave him. Okay. It's be like a sensual no, thing, like uh, body, the movie Ghost. <laughs> yes. Instead of doing clay, you're gonna do like a shaving scene. And okay. You guys are gonna like sensuous. It's gonna be like a back massage. Yeah. Yep. And like your hands are gonna be all over. And, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that you should record was, it and put it on your YouTube. That wasn't the right movie. I think you're thinking of the movie Step Bro Stuck in the Massage Table. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm thinking of the right movie. It was in Ghost. Would either of you maybe Ghost Dad? Because wasn't Cosby in Ghost Dad? Yeah, maybe it was Ghost Dad. We don't. We don't talk about him. We don't give know, him any. We I don't said. give him any free airtime. <laughs> oh, he came and, oh, wow. I was. I was trying to make a joke at his expense. I apologize <laughs> for mentioning him. Would either of you for like? I don't remember that five year Crocs anniversary. Would you shave? Would you bick shave your head so that we could all fuck look no. the same? Fuck no. you! Oh, <laughs> fuck you! How about you grow your hair back out? Yeah, mold. Yeah, I you grow your hair back out. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you grow your hair out, and then we'll all match because it's two v one. If I okay, if I can guarantee that I'm not going anywhere for two weeks, I will grow everything out and then do like uh, uh like where the top is <laughs> shaved, man, but the man, sides, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be great. But then no, you guys have to do that, too. what you would do is you would convince us to do this, and then you'd wait till the five-year anniversary show to be like, <laughs> all right, well, it's been fun. We've been doing this for five years. We're out. <laughs> yeah, see you later. <laughs> this is our last episode. <laughs> or I would use that opportunity to remove my bald cap that I've been <laughs> using for the past three yeah, years. Yeah, wow. it's a freaking, like, M. Night Shamalama Ding Dong type twist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I am drinking... Uh, Prairie Art is an ale spectrum. I, I don't care about drinking any other beer right now. Let me uh, see it. Let me I see do it. I do have some oh, plum I I, some plum conundrum uh in the fridge dude, as well. Those plum conundrums are good. Yeah, I like those a lot. 
Yeah. Uh, well, since I have not played a single video game since our last podcast, uh, Jimmy, I'd like really? you to go. F- I seriously, Loser. I have not. Yeah, Sean, you haven't played Loser. in a whole week. You haven't played one game. Mm-mm. Wow. wow. What a loser. Uh-huh. I, I built keyboards in all my spare time. Okay. Boring. Well, I, <laughs> I've been playing Batman for NES, which I've been getting frustrated at, and I've had to rage quit the last two times I played it. Uh, Damn. And ended up playing, like, <laughs> Ninja Turtles and Ninja Gaiden and shit like that, like which aren't really like easy games, but... Anyway, uh, and then I also have been playing uh, No Man's Sky. The mm. update is I talked about it last week. It's I've probably played since we since the last um, podcast. I probably jumped at least another ten hours into that game. Oh wow! Yeah, um, in all week, off stream, almost all. But I did I did Thursdays. I've been doing No Man's Sky streams for the last two weeks. Okay. Um, it's been fun, man. Actually, I didn't do it for a while because I I felt bad sometimes because sometimes I would zone out playing that game. But hey, that's me. Every I stream, think that's man. part of the fun. Sometimes is just to be able to zone out a little sometimes when you're streaming. Yes, um, and uh, to do that, like that's like, uh, uh, and it gives me a way to break up uh, sometimes playing really frustratingly hard retro games. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been nice, and uh, it's been a really a whole lot of fun. The new expeditions mode, so I can't. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. And then other than that, just um, off stream, I played a little bit of that Bloons Tower Defense game, um, which is a lot of fun. And then uh, a bunch of just random retro games because they do the retro roulette. A um, bunch of shit. <laughs> but some fun stuff, too. Um, so, yeah, that's been me the last week. Astroneer used to be my, like, zone out game. Even though I remember, yeah. Even though Weenie and I, that was like our party night game where we would play that for like five to seven hours on a Friday or Saturday night. Super late, throwing back drinks. Um, it was it was actually sort of a blessing that those are always like the lower viewer streams because chat moves mm-hmm. a little bit slower. The people who are there at that late are usually people that aren't looking to be like super interactive in a chat, right? They're just like, oh, yep. it's late. I'm up. This it's person's up. a vibe to yeah. kind of have on in the background. Yep. You know, I get it. And so. um, one of the rare streams where I play music pretty much throughout the entire thing and to be able to just, yeah, just like sit there, vibe with the girlfriend, vibe with chat and, and play a game like that where it's like mm-hmm. space, expanse, uh, m- like modding and, and mining. Um, I do want to go back to that game. Of, I, I always want to go back to that game just because it's got a it's got a special place in my heart but yeah it's definitely good to have a a stream or or a game like that for sure bishy what you've been playing and then i want to ask you if you've seen a different game mm. um i've been playing uh hell at loose just a little bit on and off that's kind of like something that me and the buddies play hey, could you break that down uh what kind yeah, of game is so, that exactly so hell at loose is uh it's basically this big uh mil- like it's like battlefield but it's it's world war ii and it's a big simulator uh, world war ii you say yeah it's world war ii so it's like saving private ryan but the game wow we've yeah. had two I, I world war i just showed a clip uh, yeah. from saving private ryan to my students last week really oh, wait great, great movie it's on netflix right now by the way i just watched it uh while well, folding laundry for the first time and mm-hmm. like so what are you saying wait for you showed your students saving private ryan a clip like 10 oh, minutes of it. I was like from start to finish. Holy no, fuck. No, I showed them because I, I I'm teaching about D-Day and it's one thing mm. to show them the newsreels of after they've already like, you know, yeah. fought, done the fighting. I showed them that clip where they they storm the beaches of Normandy, you know, on D-Day. Yep. And uh, it's an eye opening clip, man. And when they see that, usually afterwards, a lot of those kids are like, because I'm at the point now, a lot of these kids, they weren't even born when 9-11 happened. So a lot of them haven't seen Saving Private Ryan. That's fucked I, I, up! I asked the kids at the start of class, like, how many of y'all have seen this? And I only usually get, like, two or three kids that raise their hand out of the whole classroom of, like, 30 kids. Yeah. Yeah, I'm serious. It's crazy. It's a, and it's so a, when I show it to them, too. they're like, holy shit. You know, because they didn't realize just how intense and how insane war was in world war ii and how insane that normandy landing was um and uh yeah so it's pretty it's kind of it's kind of cool to be able to share that with uh, uh, the new generation it gives them a new appreciation for it 
that's not in a, it's presented in such a way you know, in video games it's presented in a way that's very desensitizing you know what i mean oh. yeah. so where it's not it's not in a you don't really gain the sort of uh the grittiness that you would get by seeing something realized via cinema you know yeah. and that that particular scene in saving private ryan where they're storming the the beaches normally that is a powerful scene in cinema i mean it, you you don't have to be even a fan of of the whole movie to appreciate what that that scene is like. Well, I think games so. have been replicating that moment from mm-hmm. the old Medal of Honor days. You know, they've been trying yeah. to like recreate that. Exact they have been, moment. but yeah. it's not the same. It's not, it's the, not same. the same. Still, still, you know? even Hell at yeah. Loose, which is like a, a sim, it, it's like Battlefield, but it's World War Two. Right. There's tanks and planes. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, even that it can't it, it can't lock it down. But you like you sit there and it's crazy to think like uh, watching Saving Private Ryan. And obviously this is a bit of a tangent, but it's crazy to think that like you could be that guy like in like in Call of Duty or in in whatever World War Two related game that spawns in and dies immediately. Like imagine mm-hmm. like the build up to that person's life to get to the point where like the gate drops, and then boom, he's dead. And like, then gone. The end, of, mm-hmm. end of the game. Um, and I think, yeah, that's, I mean, it's a shocking realization of what the cost of of uh, that war was, which is kind of nuts. But yeah, I've been playing uh, Hell at Loose. A uh, little bit of a tangent there, but yeah, it's a good a good time. Uh, and then uh, Valorant. I've been playing a lot of Valorant. I think uh, I was playing I was playing uh, Rogue Company, as I've mentioned on uh, uh, the past few podcasts. I was playing that for a while, and uh, I played that instead of Valorant because it came out at the same time. It's basically a, a third person Valorant. Um, mm. And but now I'm I'm heading back to Valorant, and I'm actually really enjoying it. But I've got to tell you. I think at the higher ranks, Valorant is actually a piece of shit game. And the reason <laughs> I say that is because every there there's it's a five v five setup, but there's four or five operators that can just flash and fucking stun, and they have two of them they can use. So if you have ultimately you have eight things that can stun people through a match, and the match is only two minutes long. Oh my god! And dude, you push, you try to push sight, and it's like blind, blind. <laughs> oh you're blind oh you've been hit with the rocket oh, and you, you literally don't get to play the game like you literally just mm. walk to site so and it's all broken you see, so the late game yeah. the, the, it hasn't been it hasn't been balanced correctly for late I, game play. if you play against coordinated people it's a, extremely frustrating it's like playing mm. csgo but everyone has 10 flashbangs oh my mm. god yeah yeah so, that doesn't sound fun but, uh, the but then again i fun. don't play that game because it doesn't appeal to me uh but I, I've heard I've heard way more good things about Valorant than I have heard bad th- things yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, it's so. a, it's a good game. The the best way to describe it is the gameplay is actually fun. Um, mm-hmm. it would be like it would be like streaming Battletoads and having a bunch of bit redemptions where people can literally have your controls taken away from you, and they just <laughs> constantly do it every single round when you're trying to like. So it'd be like a, a, yeah. one of the what do they call those the in not not let's plays but. The you know, like play Twitch things. plays yeah, yeah. chat Twitch or like plays, Twitch yep, plays yep. games, but like there's another term for it, like the where people can actively like spend channel points or bits to change the outcomes. And I can't remember what the, that was called. There's even a website that you can do for some retro games. And now I can't I remember the, the name category of it. is Twitch plays on Twitch, but I know, I know that is, about. Yeah. but I can't remember the name of the other thing I'm talking. I'm talking about. Fuck. You guys All remember right, well, the books that let you do that? Like while you were reading through, choose your own you, adventure books. Yeah, dude, yeah, I had a huge books. library of those. Yeah. I love those books. Goosebumps. Mm. Yeah, I was um, really bad at reading, so I never <laughs> have you, you got those se- picture books. Have you seen any <laughs> gameplay of um, Enlisted, the MMO yeah. World War game? Yeah, it looks a They're lot. They're making like- a MMO World War game, World War Two. I don't know if it's World War Two, but it's uh, there's a lot of iron sights. I know that much. Yeah, it's it looks like Hell at Loose, a lot like Hell at Loose, but a janky shit version of it. It's oh. made by the same people that made War Thunder, um, but it looks like uh, currently in its current state, it looks like kind of like a like a battlefield port slash like War Thunder, game. more like Boar Thunder. Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> I could never get into that game. I dude, dude I you had... know who was really into that game? Bourbon. Yes, I was yeah. about to say he used to talk to me about War Thunder, and I looked at him. I remember. The last time we were visiting and I looked at him, he's like, you ever play War Thunder? And I'm like, do I look smart to you? <laughs> and, he didn't, and he didn't answer. And I'm like, hey, exactly. All right. No, I don't play fucking War Thunder. Okay. Yeah. yeah when I bought but, my uh, VR yeah. headset, I downloaded War Thunder so I could fly planes around. And yeah. I spent probably $300 on that game and then stopped playing. Because I, I actually got sick while playing. 
I like looked up and was tracking this plane that was flying over top of me and I was doing a barrel roll and I got sick by looking up <laughs> in my VR headset. And that was it. You were done after that. Yeah, that was it. I was done. I was done. Um, mm. But on a tangent, Hell, or Hellhound just reminded me talking about um, like bit redemptions to do things. Um, Jay Brucifer, he was playing uh, Fall Guys today and he has a pop up thing that you can redeem your channel points for. And I did it right at the right time on his final game and it knocked him off of the edge and made him die and it <laughs> ruined his run. Oh, I no. think he's gonna remove it now. I think he's gonna remove it now. Uh, that's Wait. the risk you run. Like people have asked me like to use those things. Like, oh you know, you could do that. I'm like, well, how is it any different than when I had the sound effects and those redemptions? Yeah. yeah. All that's gonna happen is people save up their points and then they just freaking and they're like, I know you can set measures in place to limit redemptions mm-hmm. and all this sort of stuff. I made the choice to just not do something that other people can control actively on my stream. I know it has some benefit, and I'm not saying that it's a one-size-fits-all solution for all streamers, but there's a reason why I don't do it anymore, and that's because I know my chat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they would troll me constantly, like what you did to JB. And to be honest with you, I would do have done the same shit to him. You know, I would have done funny, the same exact it, shit. It popped up as like, you know, when you join someone's chat and you have a few points and it tells you mm-hmm. how to spend them. It yeah. was the suggestion. And I was, I didn't even know it was a thing. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, JB, yeah. you're fun, yeah, baby. Yeah, it tells you. It was only a thousand you... channel points, too. JB is a fucking <laughs> oh, he's goober, totally man. totally underselling <laughs> it. There's a guy. Uh, that's a lesson, you know what? That's a lesson learned for yeah. him, then. You know? Yeah. There's a guy I, signed, uh, I saw on TikTok who he has uh, bits for redemptions. And he plays nothing but Tarkov, and there's like a 5,000-bit redemption where mm-hmm. it just throws a grenade. So as soon as they redeem it, it throws a grenade wherever you're at. And, yeah. I mean, it's 50 fucking bucks. That's pretty funny, though. But it's that funny as shit. That is pretty fucking funny. Like, you could just be sitting there, and someone could drop 5,000 bits, and all of a sudden, <laughs> grenade! Yep. You know what I mean? That's, that is kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's a cool little way to redeem. Yeah, I like that. There's um there was another guy there's another dude who he also plays Tarkov and the only clips that I've seen is him standing outside of a door and all he does is go surprise mother bitch and he kicks the door <laughs> open and then he blasts anybody that's in that room <laughs> and it's the same clip over and over and over he has an amazing voice with an amazing mic and just and the way just, that it's it just reverbs him kicking doors down and saying the same and thing and like. The sound of kicking doors open in Tarkov is so fucking loud. And yeah. then he just blasts people. It just added so funny to me. Um, TikTok's, again, one of those weird platforms where somebody Dude, can do the like, same you're, thing. You're like, uh, you sound like, I mean, I know Weenie doesn't have anything to be worried about or anything, but it sounds like you uh, you and TikTok getting kind of serious, pal. I am kind of serious. I'm coming up on a million views. I'm about... 100,000 wow. views shy of hitting in like three months. What the wow. fuck is that? Yeah, that's, that's some voodoo magic. That's like nine times the total views on my YouTube channel that I've had for <clears throat> eight years. That yeah. has had a total of like 700 videos. Yeah. Fucking stupid. Um, ready to get into some topics? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> fuck you, man. That's what, hey, man. That's what, that's that's what, what we're, we're fucking here for. Here for. <laughs> that's what we're here for, man. Woo! Woo! Oh, I must throw up. I have ice cream, and Jimmy John's, and beef jerky, uh, and nerds oh, in my stomach. Lettuce? And are you lettuce washing it down cream? with some beer too? Mm. Yeah, okay, are you? Do you say that because Weenie always says that she burps up lettuce? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Lettuce and milk is just a bad combination. Just there's imagine certain those two foods things. that you don't want to mix. Like g- generally speaking, I try not to be drinking a lot of alcohol if I've had much dairy. Oh, because I'm in it, trouble. You don't want to mix a lot of dairy and booze, in my mm. opinion. Mm. Some people can handle it well. I cannot. So, I guess yeah. we'll see. I didn't find out. Well, sour beers. Cup of milk Yo, you fucked like around. Now you're finding out. Yeah. Cup of milk. <laughs> All right. Uh, the first topic, which at this point is kind of an old topic. However, we have not had the conversation yet, and I'm very interested to hear what you both have to say. So I'm interested em, to hear your topic. Hey, man, fuck them. That's oh, my That's thanks. Uh, the title of Twitch's blog post from April 7th was Our Plan for Addressing Severe Off-Service Misconduct. 
I'm just going to read the first three mm-hmm. short paragraphs and then um, just give everybody a gist of what we're shitting about. And then um, we shall discuss. <clears throat> In January, we began enforcing our updated hateful conduct and harassment policy so we could better protect every community on Twitch. In case you missed it, the refresh policy features a clearer and more consistent stance against hate and harassment and gives you more insight on what is and isn't acceptable on Twitch. Today, we're shifting our focus and talking about how we plan to address severe misconduct that impacts the Twitch community, but happens off Twitch. Our current guidelines state that in some serious cases where this is available, verifiable evidence, we may take action against users for hateful conduct or harassment that occurs off Twitch services, meaning on social media, other online services, or even offline when directed at members at the Twitch community. And they had that last part bolded. Uh, we are updating and expanding our off, our approach. Uh, stop. You only said three short paragraphs. You went past. You must stop. Okay, thank you. Otherwise, you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to quickly summarize what they have next, and um, I'm going to post this in chat for anybody that is curious enough to want to read. They have these offenses that are put into two different categories, and they have category one and category two, and then they have all of these things explained. And it's quite long, so I'm not going to go into it. Um, But I need to know how you guys feel about this, because I Mm -hmm. have found myself on both ends of the spectrum, on both sides of the fence, on... I I tried to think of it in a personal way, on a personal level, like yep. how I would want these people to be dealt with if it was affecting me. And then also on a grand scheme of like, okay, if we let these floodgates be opened, which at this point we don't really have a choice, what what is the negative impact going to be? And a little bit of this kind of, it kind of goes past my general understanding of how things should be especially when it comes to, like, freedom of speech, right? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, there was um, one of the... Somebody had on the podcast recently, um, Rini, who works for Pretzel Rocks. She sent me a clip uh, or an article where Intel was developing this software that in real time could know when you said something like the N-word with an ER and cut it. Before it even made it out to the internet to to voice chat or anything. And I was like, holy fuck, that is next level awesome. But wait, what freedoms are we infringing upon with this sort of thing? And so like that's kind of outside my scope of understanding, which is why I'm bringing it to you guys, because I feel like you might have a little bit more insight into that side of it. So first impressions don't all scream at once. Well, I went and finished reading the article that was posted, uh, and I know you don't want to read the whole thing because that's just boring, but basically they, Twitch breaks it into two categories, and the first category is if, they, if you tr- harass someone on Twitch as well as off Twitch, then they can do stuff in addition to what you harass someone on Twitch, which harassment should be a thing. But the category two, the stuff that's off Twitch, it mentions specifically... Deadly violence and violent extremism, terrorist activities, explicit or credible threats of mass violence, leadership or membership in a known hate group, carrying out acting as an accomplice to non-consensual sexual activities or sexual assault, exploitation of children, um, you know, explicit uh, threats against Twitch staff uh, staff, and and, and on and on. All of those Mm -hmm. are behaviors that are reprehensible, terrible. Yeah, reprehensible behaviors. So they're simply outlining that. The fact that every one of those are a bullet point means that every single one of those things has happened multiple times. Oh, you know right. I mean? yeah. The fact that it has to be summed up in a bullet point. So in my opinion, this is not much to do about nothing. I don't think that Twitch is uh, stemming freedom of speech in any way. Mm-hmm. Um, and not, not that that's what you're saying. I'm just saying um, I think that this is just basically just making their terms of service more clear and being able to find ways to choose to kick people off the platform that are doing things outside of Twitch that are reprehensible things. So I, I don't see it really as a, as a bad thing um, overall at all. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think that um, what we've seen with Twitch in the past, and it's probably going to be a continuous thing, is that 
the rule sets are very vague, right? Like they're not very specific. Um, they add spe spe specifics within the rules to identify examples. But I think what this is doing is it's giving Twitch the ability to act on um, things that have happened in the past or things that, you know, uh, issues that have happened off of Twitch that they can't act on because it's not part of their terms of service unless someone's a partner um, where they can prevent someone from streaming on Twitch based on their actions off of the platform. So I think that they're being vague um, it, or they're creating this rule set just so then they can enact on um, a potential future issue that happens if someone says some stupid shit on, on Twitter or they threaten Twitch or they, you know, threaten another uh, streamer, they can now therefore enact on that because they have a rule in place. Right. Um, I, I see, I don't think it's um, necessarily a bad thing unless they start to use it to prevent people with different opinions, like different political opinions from it or using the platform by identifying it as, you know, hate speech, right? It, it, I don't that, think that's don't it think at that's all, man. Happen, I, I mean, right. even the title of the article says our plan for addressing severe off service misconduct. Right. And every single one of those bulleted points yeah. is severe off platform or off service misconduct. So right. I don't um I don't think that this is a it should be a concern when it comes to censorship or anything like that. I think this is just being able to keep people accountable honestly i don't yeah. think that's a bad thing at all no and i, I totally I think agree. it's a move in the right direction to be honest yeah i think i think that they've um i think twitch staff has probably been based on this has been regularly left without the tools to be able to enact um any sort of penalty for people yeah. doing stuff on other platforms and maybe that's why this has come and i think it you know time will tell with this sort of things because it's not mm -hmm. our judgment it's yeah it's ultimately the twitch staff's judgment uh for creating rules like this um, but as long as they use it appropriately and make sure that people that are doing these reprehensible things are prevented from using Twitch as a platform, I think that that'll make the community better um, in the most part. So, yeah, totally. So where I see this going south is I'm I'm trying to apply this to a real world situation and not to yeah. not to impose that Twitch streaming isn't real world, but I think right. that there are I still very much consider. Twitch and content creation, the Wild West. That there is right. still so much shit that is going on that is ungoverned, that is unpunished, and we're super, super far behind. How can we compare this to a real, real world situation, right? Where if you are at a job and you are caught, let's say, on social media, or let's even say, like somebody just rats you out to management. They don't actually have any proof. They just say, oh, I, I saw this person at a, a KKK meetup and and they were killing people and, and I saw it. Um, is, do you think that's fair? Do you think that's fair that you can lose your job because of something that happened outside of work? Yes. Well, in this, Absolutely. Uh, that is not only article, fair, that should be the way it is. Yeah. If, you, if you are proven to be a total fucking douche and you're a member of a supremacist group or something that is a hate group and you want to keep working at your job that doesn't represent those ideologies yeah you should be able to be fired so what if it's opinion. not proven and so didn't and that's where i was if it's uh, proven was, yeah that's where i was interjecting. that's all I that's the whole in this point article in this article they say that there has to be Proof, right? It has to be because, proof, yeah. The but, burden of proof is on the accuser, not the accused. Right, but that is assuming that Twitch has always followed through with a ban only having proof, which we all know I'm is not, not true. I'm not saying anything right, you know. about the way, because remember, this is, a, this is a business we're talking about. This isn't like a, the judicial branch, like they have a true court system. I mean, these are business people making decisions at the end of the day, right? No, right, right, but what I'm saying is that don't you feel like this being laid out this way is a slippery slope for that stuff to happen? To I don't where think so? How is it a slippery slope for basically outlining these are all things that are bad and crimes? Many of them, uh, most of those are actual like big time crimes. So the couple that aren't are questionable things like leadership or membership in a known hate group. Like if you are known to be a leader, a member of a, a supremacist group. You shouldn't have a voice on a platform like Twitch, in my opinion. Just I like agree with you, that. you know, you shouldn't have a voice. Um, it's one of the reasons why other social media platforms have removed people who, you know, use hate speech and stuff on their platforms. Uh, sometimes people who 
have millions and millions of followers and have high positions of political authority. But they've removed them True. from those positions. So I don't see how this is a bad thing at all. But could it be used for? Of course, yes. It could be used uh, in, in justly, but I, I don't really... When I see something like this, I see this as the company basically just making it to where it's easier for them to get rid of people who are trouble and avoid a lawsuit, you know? Yeah. But don't you also see it as a way for them to just get rid of people who they don't like? I mean, you, I, mean I suppose, but I mean, look at all the variety of people on this platform. I don't, I don't see Twitch as just dropping people just because they don't like them, man. I mean, I don't... Mm, I would highly that. disagree with that. that. <laughs> I don't. I don't know, man. I don't. Maybe. Maybe you guys know stuff that I don't know about, but I don't see this as like a a habitual thing where Twitch is just cutting loose people that they just because they don't like them. I I'm sure that there's outliers, and I'm sure there's examples <laughs> where there's Twitch staff yeah. or different people have taken advantage of things. I'm not trying to pretend that sort of thing doesn't happen. Um, yeah. and, and you know that as well as I do. Look at all the when the uh, the all the allegations which turned to be credible allegations about twitch staff using you know their position to you know to harass and sexually harass and and abuse people right um those are all things that are reprehensible and yet it was probably difficult because there was nothing that they had in their uh company policies about all these different things of, of the actions that can be taken about it you know mm -hmm. um so that's kind of where i stand on it and do i understand what y'all are saying sure but yeah. i think at the end of the day it's better to have a policy like this than to not have one yeah so, i think yeah. When, uh, in all the jobs that i've taken i've signed a social media um compliance right like a what i'm allowed to and not allowed to post <clears throat> and a lot of the guidelines are very similar like no threatening people no Mm -hmm. vaguely insult or just no insulting people just for the the mere you know just to insult people um but i don't think like when it comes to streamers they don't sign any policy like that right that twitch really doesn't have the control to allow that they just have to set up rule sets and yeah and knackers i agree with you this could be a slippery slope if it's used outside of the means of what they're outlining here which in twitch's uh history we've seen them do things that you know haven't been consistent with their rule sets right or twisting rules in order to you know ban someone or allow someone to remain on the platform who's done the exact same offense um so i think yes it could be a slippery slope but like i said it's not up to us to decide and ultimately it'll come down to seeing how they place it it could be bad but at the end of the day i think that the positives of them having an, another tool to be able to ban the people that are doing these reprehensible things will outweigh potentially how they could use it in a um, negative fashion yeah negative fashion yeah and i think that's one of my one of my gut reactions when I see things like this is sure it it might not be all that bad now, right? What happens when there's an addendum? What happens when there's an asterisk or a change made in the future um, where it's okay? Now all of a sudden it's not just federal offenses. Now it's just like oh it's just like yeah, it's misdemeanors now. It's like oh it's just oh well if you don't have, share the same mindset as we do, we have the choice. And I am. <laughs> I am very much of the mindset that it is a privilege to be on Twitch. It is not mm -hmm. a right. No, no matter what anybody says, just because you're here does not mean that you have a right to be here. At the end of the day, somebody else is paying for the server. Somebody else is, is paying a marketing team to get your name out there onto the web. It is a privilege to be here. And they, to some extent have an absolute right to decide who uses their platform or not. And I think that's sure. probably that's probably one of the most the more controversial takes that I think a lot of people have is like, dude, how can you how can you complain about Twitch taking a cut of your sub money when you wouldn't have a sub if it wasn't for the platform? And that obviously unpacks an, an entire new conversation. Um but I kind of feel the same here like sure, maybe you have some far left ideologies right but that doesn't make you uh, a fucking terrorist it doesn't make you a terrible right. human being and your privilege of but having who you ask as well right very yeah very much so uh that you know you're still a human and there's no reason that that privilege should be taken away from you if you're See, not this using is where your... this is where i'm going to stop you though because again this particular page is talking particularly about severe 
off service misconduct. Right. We're not talking about just some far left leaning organization. We're talking about terrorist recruiting, terrorist type activities, extremist behavior, violence, inciting violence, that sort of shit. I don't want it to be like, and I see what you're saying also. Like, okay, well, when will it include maybe less than that? And mm-hmm. I get what you're saying, but they're not saying that. And that's just saying, are we going to worry about, you know, the possibility of something that hasn't happened yet? See, I mean, but that's not true because it has happened already. It's just been, it's happened before this blog post. And it, it kind of seems what, like. What has happened? People have gotten removed from this platform for other platforms for not necessarily doing anything illegal, but having personal disagreements with Twitch employees, Twitch staff, having different beliefs, different opinions. I mean, I don't know if it's is there an example that of someone that has been just totally wronged by Twitch staff? Can I pull one out of my ass right now? No. No, um, I'm not asking you to, and I, and I no. guess it's more being rhetorical, but I just, like I said, I'm not saying these things don't occur. I think that's right. the outlier. I don't think that's a regular occurrence. Anytime you have a company where you, you got people, millions of streamers, of course, there's going to be some incidents and where people are going to take advantage of their positions of authority and power and misuse it. It's a tale as old as time in any profession in the fucking world. And Twitch is no different. And the power that people literally have at their fingertips with a few keystrokes by being on Twitch staff. And it happened to that one creep fucking, uh, what's his name? I don't even remember his name, but you remember like he was a big part of, like he was a big mm-hmm. Twitch staff person and he was using that authority to like, you know, sexually harass female streamers and yep. stuff, right? Yep. Um, I don't know, man. I, I just think that the, those sort of things, um, at the end of the day, to use what Bishop likes to say a lot. And I usually want to respond when he says at the end of the day, which day are you talking about? Um, <laughs> today. Today, right now. I think it's better to have this policy in place than to not. Okay. Yep. And I think that it's really, it's only, this, the fine print is addressing the very serious actions that they can say. If you do this sort of, if you're involved in any of this shit off Twitch, you're gone, basically. We find out about it. You're gone, as right. as it should be. Right, yeah. as it should be. And, and I, I think Twitch has a. They have a. Sorry to cut you off. Now, you're good. But you're they, good. Um, uh, I think that Twitch staff has a very heavy responsibility not to abuse the power that they're in. Right, and it, just like any other platform, and it really comes down to like, um, like we could have this discussion in six months if all of a sudden they're labeling someone that's you know conservative as a terrorist just because he has a conservative ideology. Right, like there's extremes of you know, being left or right that are, you know, that lead to violence. But I think that it, it just really comes down to how they, you know, how the the person in charge is making the uh, decision of what the infraction is, right? Because someone could just right. blatantly say like, hey, this is, you know, something's not right. And then all of a sudden they're getting labeled a terrorist because people listen to what they say. And then all of a sudden they enact upon the tweet that they made, right? Um so I think it's it's it could potentially be a slippery slope, but we kind of have to wait for those events to happen so we can address those specifically, because I think it like Jimmy and I said, th- it's better to have these rules in place than to not have them. Um, and it really comes down to how the, you know, the person in charge utilizes the rule set. And I got to address something that was mentioned in chat by um, old Kentucky Paul, who says, what about musicians who advocate violence and demean women? The difference there is the platform. Because if you're a musician, if you you have to you either sign a label with somewhere and that is your platform that they're putting out. So if you're the type of musician that's putting out music that's like that, they've accepted that as their platform and they've taken on the risk. Twitch is a much larger platform that covers a ton of streamers. So that you have to make these kind of blanket rules that should apply to everyone. So it's totally different there. If you want to make music that's about demeaning and uh all this shit to you know to women and whatnot and 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 uh all that because that's your that's what your lyrics are about um it's about who's gonna who's gonna allow you to you know use that platform and for some people it's creating their own independent platform you know what i mean some music music artists have had to do that because they uh the the a label or whoever doesn't like their music you know, and that sort of stuff happened in the past. Um, but so. but you and you as an artist, 
you have to accept the consequences of creating music like that. Like, mm -hmm. you can't just incite violence against women through music and then be like, oh, what the hell? Don't ban me. Like, yeah. <laughs> hello, McFly. Yeah. Um, I was just scrolling through uh, the the replies to Twitter to the main tweet that Twitch put out, and of course, whenever Twitch has a, a tweet like this, the number one response oh is always God. like, "Do something about the boobs on Twitch!" Oh right? Oh my God! I I it, reading the through the comments. Problem. Anytime <laughs> Twitch tweets anything, the comments yeah. are are cancer. It's so I mean, bad. They are, it is so toxic and so bad. You guys stop saying just, that though. I feel like I lose brain cells reading through any of them because some of them are just such terrible takes on anything, you know? We, we we can't we we don't so we don't use cancer as a adjective for naughty things anymore, remember? You can't use it, cancer is not toxic? No, I'm it's not it, saying it wasn't naughty. I'm saying it's toxic like something that's cancerous is toxic. Right, all right, but 2021 man <laughs> i can't say i can't say something is cancer yeah yeah i'm it, not allowed is that a thing it's not that you're not allowed it's that it's a little it's a little insensitive it, it's just one of those things you you can you can <laughs> it's it's a, it's one of those sensitivity things I can, I yeah that's uh, all right all right i'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. my bad people I'm, can be triggered by it by it man, but i'm sorry it, i mean it's if okay I, if literal, i made anyone upset i didn't mean any offense i said it like two months ago sense in that yeah. the literal definition of cancer makes sense in that context mm -hmm. i'm just i didn't but, mean it in a, in a sense from the yeah, yeah. like you're dying of cancer i meant the sense of it's something that's toxic and bad and spreading right yeah yeah it's okay i i know what kind of person you are jimbo yeah um so i was scrolling through i was scrolling through the replies to this tweet and then what do i see it's the snapshot of that girl who spread her vagina right in front of the camera on twitch and only got like a three-day ban did you guys hear about that yeah and she said she I think was about yeah i think i heard about that yeah, well, was, i'm just like scrolling 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 vagina just right <laughs> fucking there and it wasn't even the top like like tweet I'm like what's going on you assholes couldn't mm. couldn't that be um there's a there's laws for revenge porn. Like if you post pictures of your ex girlfriend that sent you nude pictures, um, yeah. After, so there's laws based on the fact that she didn't intend on distributing that to the platform that it went to. There could the person that's reposting that on Twitter could actually see legal uh, action mm. if that person just decides to go after them. Mm. You know that. So like if you if you take a it'd like be tough though because then you'd yeah. have to prove that that person intentionally. Yeah. Did that instead of just randomly retweeted. You know what I mean? You could just play yeah, ignorance. Yeah. It'd be a tough thing to prove. I believe that that'd be a tough case to take, I would imagine, yeah. as a lawyer, because the, then you have to prove the intent, which is very difficult to do. You know? Yeah, through, throughout the process, too. Like, if they actually meant to post that on the right, platform. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It'd, be a, it'd be a whole thing. But yeah, that's... I mean, it's, it's good, dude. I think yeah. it's good. It's a good deterrent because you see... It, dude, and I see it in school as a teacher, man. There are kids, man, that will like send each other freaking lewd pictures and shit, and mm -hmm. they'll pass it around to all their friends. And then next thing you know, they're facing child pornography charges because they've got underage kid nudity on their fucking phones yep. or their school issued iPads, you know? So it's a big, it's a very big deal, you know? And, and you got to teach kids, like, hey, man. Don't be doing that sort of shit. Don't be sending around nude pictures because once you send it, that ain't just because you think you deleted it doesn't mean it's gone. <laughs> you know? Right, right. And that's what happened with Twitch a few years ago or last last year, right? They uh, found out that you could go or I think it was Devin Nash during his live stream. He found out that you could go back with um, a certain API command and find any deleted clip on Twitch. Remember we were talking yep. about that? Uh, what was that like six months ago? God, yeah. that, it was about that long here's, ago, wasn't here's the it? Rule. Don't send your PP pics, guys. I'd see you guys in chat, hellhound. Don't be saying I don't want any more <laughs> pictures of your penis, Paul. Okay, I've seen enough. Quit sending me your penis. I've seen are you enough. trying to say those are unsolicited middle-aged streams? I don't need any more. Okay, of Paul, these go ahead and pictures. delete my penis pictures, please. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I also need to grab another drink, so I'll let you guys fill some airtime. Yeah, I, might, I yeah. might come back. I might even get myself a uh, a little treat. Mm. A little treat. I'm thinking uh, penis maybe, picture? no, I was thinking maybe a uh, strawberry fruit roll-up. Hmm. Hmm. 
I like mm-hmm. where you're advantage. going with this. This is the yeah. advantage of having a wife that eats a bunch of junk food and a and a ten year old in the house. There's always all kinds of good snacks. Mm. I'm. <sighs> yeah, I don't eat a lot of man. snacks, but I when I want one, I can always find a good one. You can get a, a fruit a nice roll up. I'm okay. I will. I will not disagree that it is. There's a wonderful part of being an adult where you can just eat whatever snacks. However, mm-hmm. there are certain snacks as an adult. That just aren't good. You don't fruit like fruit roll ups? Is definitely like. Have you ever eaten a gusher as a fucking adult? It's disgusting. No, if there's anybody in good, if there's anybody in chat, made out of fruit. Tell me, you've got fruit by the foot also sitting down there. No, I don't like fruit by the foot as much. It doesn't have the same flavor. You, fruit, fruit by the foot. I remember pulling it out I and it being as tall as me. I used and to love it. Yeah. It's literally a now. foot. I, I think no, it's like, no, like, it's like usually fruit by the foot. They usually have like three or four feet in. It's one not four. Package. It's like two or three. It's like three feet. But remember when you were little and you would unravel that thing? You're like, holy yeah. shit! It's as tall yeah, as me. Dude. You're like, that oh, shit I'm, doesn't I'm equate. Eat all of it. Anyways, go get it's your. So good. Your, all right, I'm gonna get. Wait, a okay, wait. One last question. Beer. What is it? The fruit what? roll up with the tattoos on it? I don't think mm. we have those ones right now. Motherfucker. Sometimes they have those out, but they don't have them all the time. All right, that's fair. All right. I, I, there is going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of people that get sick in like 30 years and the common denominator between all of them is like oh yeah I spent 10 years putting fruit by the foot or fruit roll up tattoos on my arm and now like they're they, it's like the, yeah. um, that fucking dude from Game of Thrones who's got dragon scale all up his arm it's going to be that yeah. with f- fruit roll ups dude you know what's uh, a little bit of a tangent but in the same realm fucking go crazy. for it dude how dumb were our parents for getting a box Dumb. of like candy fucking wheat, right? Cereal. Yeah. And pouring it into a bowl of milk and being like, that's a good breakfast for my child to then go to school and learn all day and be fueled until he gets a piece of pizza or some dog shit. And some and chocolate another, milk. And it's some more chocolate milk sugar to, to fuel the rest of the day. Dude, I remember uh, coming home from school and being so fucking exhausted, probably because I was getting like onset diabetes from the the my meal plan throughout the day that like I got home, laid down on the carpet, fell asleep for like two hours, woke up in a drug and had to drink water like it was like bad, dude. Can like, you I feel like fucking. our generation is very, very aware of the food that we are putting into our bodies right now. Now, now, now yeah. our parents were told that breakfast was the most important meal of the day and you mm-hmm. should have a fucking massive bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios with a with a big bowl of milk. And hey, if it's yeah. lacking flavor, you just grab a tablespoon, you scoop out some sugar and you just mm-hmm. sprinkle it over. The, you'll, you'll be yeah. fine. And then, yes, go, like not only have your child wake up at fucking six oh five to go to high school, but have pop vending machines in the hallways. Hungry Howie's Pizza, Bosco Sticks, fucking Hostess, like, Mm -hmm. Boston Cream. What the fuck? Nobody, like, that was okay? Are you fucking kidding me? And we're surprised that we have, like, the highest obesity rate in, like, the entire world. Um, Yeah, no, that is uh, is insane. Imagine the productivity if people were, like, um, like, on a high-protein diet, children. Dude, we'd be fucking huge, man. Maybe we were growing so fast, like, physically, that, uh... They were like, hey, we got to stunt the growth of these motherfuckers, dude. We got to hit them with a little sugar, dude. These guys are getting too fucking big, man. We can't make the roads any bigger, man. We can't make bigger (laughs) cars, man. I also wonder what would happen. I I say this from experience. What if it was normal to not eat anything until noon and to not eat anything? Like, what if what if that was the motto of the U.S. government? Not breakfast is the most important Mm -hmm. meal of the day. Do not eat until noon. Yeah. Because the only reason people eat before then is because we've all conditioned ourselves to eat before then. Because yeah. our, our grandparents grew up doing it. Our parents grew up. Um, but if you go back even farther, people didn't fucking eat as soon as they, as soon as they woke up. It just wasn't right. a thing. Um, so, yeah, I wonder, like, what kind of... I think it's... Um, I know there's some countries in, uh, in Europe that are yeah. like, it's very uncommon to eat early. Or it's, yeah. it's more so common to have... Two meals out of a day instead of three. Or those meals are broken up into a couple tiny things instead of, like, going to Coney Island, getting a $10 breakfast skillet that's got potatoes, bacon, sausage, sausage, yep, gravy, yep. peppers, eggs. Like, holy shit, Frank's red hot all over that bitch. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think about that often because I still have those conversations with mm-hmm. my parents. Like, when, when I first started fasting, 
they were like, Nicholas, you're going to become malnourished. What do you yeah. What do you mean you're not going to eat? And this is coming from my parents who it's two cups of two cream, two sugar as soon mm-hmm. as they wake up for their entire lives. Um, yeah. My dad, who now has intestine problems because he grew up eating um, deli sandwiches every single day, processed meat with preservatives and chemicals, chemicals every fucking day, because that was like, oh, it, you're, you're lacking protein. Go to the yeah. store and get a deli sandwich. There's your fucking it's, what? My mom, whenever I would get cranky and sassy, my mom would be like, eat this piece of turkey. You need protein. So, <laughs> oh, my God. It's fucking crazy to me now. Yeah. It's crazy to think like not only that, not only food, but how many other things that you're talking to your parents about. And you're like, holy fuck. Like you guys grew up being taught something that is completely irrelevant now. That is like ridiculous to even think or even say. And it makes me think to myself, like, what are those things now that that I'm experiencing? Right. And like when I was obviously like you mentioned the keto the fucking. Yep. Keto. Or you, you mentioned like the, the fucking soda pops inside of a, in, in, in the hallways at school. Like, dude, why the fuck is this here? Why don't we have like, uh, like, I, I, I don't know. It seems like, it seems like in the past 30 years, we haven't been able to figure out what the fuck diet for humans, right? Yeah. Like we, we can't figure out what the fuck is going on or like what actually works. Um, one interesting thing that, um, I'm a, I'm a big history buff and I'm really interested in like war, uh, history. But one thing that came out of the Gulf War and uh, and Iraq War that was interesting is that European um, units that were working with the U.S. One thing that they took away, or in, in a lot of the cases, there's like little notes and journals and stuff, is that they notated. Um, I think it was specifically French soldiers, the one that I was reading. They notated how big American soldiers were. They're just big fucking people, and uh, that's really interesting because, like. I wonder if that, how much that has to do with what the fuck we're eating, right? Like just yeah. processed foods and all this other bullshit. And like in 10 years from now, are we just going to be like, uh, or not 10, but like by the time we're our parents age, are we just going to be like completely fucked, like liver failure, just like falling apart? Or are we just going to be like living to 160 years old because we have so many preservatives in, in us, you know? I I definitely think about that a lot. Like what are we being told that is good for us now that in 20 yeah. or 30 years is going to be bad. Um, in 30 years, all of the diets are, are going to be absolutely non-existent. I mean, they're yep. just like, they're just not going to fucking exist because almost every diet is some sort of a fad. Like the yeah. base that you need to lose weight is to just watch how many calories you're eating food portion control and the amount of food that you're eating and then exercise. Um, like, did we have gym class? Yes. Why wasn't gym a required class every year? Why wasn't some sort of physical activity required? Instead, we're like, oh, no, you got to go to honors chemistry, too. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, there should have been so much so much of a different education growing up. Um, but I think the thing that we have on our side um, is, oh, you got to you got a fruit roll Ooh, up. Is that a Slim Jim? Wait. <laughs> it's a fruit roll up. Uh, what? Wait, what? Wait, that's not a roll up. That's a flat. That's like a piece of taffy, man. What the fuck is that? That is what they look like. I think you're muted, Jimmy. You're, you're muted. He, he's definitely muted. You ever had a fruit roll up? No, no, no. I thought fruit roll ups were literally rolled up. What the fuck is that? Well, it is rolled up. It's, it's, it's rolled flattened. up in here. It's rolled up like you unroll it when you open the thing. God, you're so I, Canadian, are you remembering dude. circular packaging? Look, look. Hold on, yeah. I'll ASMR Wait, no, you. it used Hang to on. be. It used to be. What the fuck oh. is that? It's so small. Oh, yeah. It used to be way bigger, though. No, no, that's the exact that's size. The size? No, f- oh, I'm the tattoos. Of yeah, they're on here. Yeah, there it is, dude. Fucking lick and stick it to your forehead. Yeah. No, I don't want to do that. Um, Get a tongue tattoo. Yeah, so I, I definitely oh. think about it, and it scares me a little bit, but I think that the thing that we have at our disposal is mm-hmm. the internet, which means not only is it easier to prove things wrong, it is easier to get more people connected to th- the people that know what the fuck they're talking about to chime in. Right. Because before all we had were doctored textbooks from our fucking school library, whereas now we have yeah. we have access to a lot more information but just as much misinformation. So, yeah. Calories. I think, I think most of the da- dietary stuff, wasn't it like a marketing person that wanted to sell a product and then they found a doctor that was like, you might be right. <laughs> Give me a the whole. That's the whole breakfast. Yeah. The whole breakfast yeah. is the most important meal of the day. That's that whole scam. 
Um, yeah, Six man. Six just... ten doctors say that this is the best tooth or the best fucking gum you can chew. Fruit or uh, uh, name a uh, double me. Fruity roll up or whatever the fucking gum is, man. Uh, next up on the Twitch topic list. By the way, thank you for giving me some insight. I really, I don't know where I land on it yet. So I'm going to take some time over the next week or so to kind of really think and and discover what this actually means and what this doesn't mean. Because obviously there is the knee jerk emotional reaction. Um, a lot of the replies to those tweets um, made absolutely no sense. Like like yeah. you were saying, Jimmy, a lot of the hypotheticals that I was getting into are not a anything that are outlined in the current TOS as it is now. Um, but we're young, we're horny, we jump the gun. That's what happened. So we'll, well see. I, I think it, just like I said, it's going to come down to how they use it, right? So right. We just have to wait for the event that they fuck it up and they use it in a way that we don't like and then we can bitch about it. Um, but yeah. We love bitching. Um, yes. Content. I'm going to skip over the second one and just go to the third one. Uh, had a little bit of... Uh, a little social media scuffle today. It was my, it was my one for the month, and Ooh. this is touching on Discord and Gilded. So, if anybody mm. in here doesn't know, Gilded is the not sure new SM7 on the block B of platforms. <laughs> yeah, see, fucking seriously. Uh, so, Gilded is basically a, a, a Discord clone where it is a text and voice application meant for communities of all sizes. Whether you are a uh, a D and D community, a, a WoW guild, a, a streaming community, a gaming community. It is meant to tick all the boxes and then some. So what they have been priding themselves with is highlighting all of the things that Discord is doing wrong and using that in their marketing and their advertising. So every other day, I see a tweet from Gilded that is like hashtag why I switched highlighting things where Discord is falling short and then saying, hey, we do these things that Discord doesn't do. Come on over and hang out with us. So as somebody who loved, had an amazing first impression with Gilded, for somebody who has reached out multiple times to try and get somebody on the show to get more information on Gilded, I'm very much on the Gilded train. I want to learn more. I, I can't wait to see where it goes. I woke up in a, with a, my panties in a bunch, and I saw this tweet, and I said, you know what? I'm going to say something. Today's the day I say something. And very kindly, I said paraphrasing can you guys advertise your platform without bringing up discord every other day this like this type of mm. marketing is yeah. is really petty and childish like if if you are if your platform is fucking awesome then let it speak for itself and just and just let it organically grow and instead we have this every other day this petty slant not slander but petty like poking at the other person and um I don't know if it's like, am I fucked up kind of deal where I'm just sensitive to that type of marketing because I find it, first of all, I find it extremely childish. I find it predatory because what usually happens with these little companies that are trying to be is that they grow up and expand to the point where they fall short in the same exact way that the companies that are large now. Like, oh, we're free. We won't do this. We won't do that. And then all of a sudden, they get the 70 million viewers, and mm -hmm. they're now doing the same things, asking for Gilded Nitro and, and, and paywalling certain features. So, Bishop, I know you have a, a history in advertising and marketing. How do you feel about this type and the last thing that i want to yeah. highlight which somebody brought up a good point snidely he's like i bet you weren't around when discord's motto was uh time to ditch uh skype i'm like motherfucker mm -hmm. i've been using discord since three months after it came out like yeah. <laughs> and my snide comment was i've been using discord since you were still studying for finals <laughs> i was like yeah. oh that was so cool i'm such a cool guy on the internet but anyways how do you feel about that type of marketing and then specifically in this case so in my experience having worked um for a company called replay xd we were a gopro we're literally our like how i described what our company was was it was gopro but a different form factor right and the reason that i have to do that is because gopro is like the the household name that if you say that anyone will understand what your product is and then the you kleenex can it yeah you can you can position it differently in what you do differently and that's an easy way of marketing to someone that 
ultimately wouldn't understand what your platform is if you're immediately communicating with them. But it, it is a cheap way to market as well, right? It's it, it's telling your story without having to tell your story. It's saying, hey, we're them, but we we have a little bit. Uh, these are the things that we do different. And it's a, it's a good th- thing to utilize this sort of marketing approach, but not as your primary marketing approach, right? Like it's good to tell that story and how you're similar and then also um, show how you, you know, you're doing things differently. You, you learned something from one platform and you're making a change. So then, you know, like you're positioning yourself um, to be the competitor. Um, but when it's too much of that, it becomes like, a, hey, we're we are clearly number two. And this was the case when I took over at um, at Replay. Replay's dead now. It's no longer a company, probably because I took over the marketing. Um, but, <laughs> um, and that's that's where they were. They were they were not talking about um, like what their story was. They were talking about how they were different from GoPro. Right. And they were constantly trying to tell this story about how. GoPro exists and we're differentiating ourselves from GoPro in these ways and we're better than GoPro. And that was the story was that they were like trying to drive the, you know, different um, features of the product to say, hey, we're better because we're more aerodynamic. We're a GoPro, but we're better because we're a different form factor. And realistically, as soon as you say the name of another company in your marketing approach, you've already become number two, right? Like we are this thing, but different. we're McDonald's, but healthier, Right. You're acknowledging that McDonald's is the better, more popular, more understood product. And when you continue to do that as the main piece of your marketing message, it detracts from what your company actually is. Right. So people just look at you as a uh, as a competitor or like a another option instead of looking at you as a a full in-house, you know, company. The main right? like option. You, the first. Yeah, the choice. main option. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's basically what I was going to say. I mean. You had a lot more uh, experience in marketing and that sort of stuff. But well, my understanding was because I actually saw your little scuffle on, on Twitter this morning and I just kind of chuckled to myself. I didn't say anything because I was like, well, I guess I know what we'll be talking about on the podcast later. <laughs> <laughs> so Am I didn't I even asshole? say anything. I didn't like it or anything because I was like, I'll see how this plays out. Um, but I... Um, <laughs> I just see it as, it, do I like this? You understand. I mean, this is it's basically just a marketing strategy, you know. Right. And yeah. and and they're taking this the approach of um, any any sort of news or hype or discussion about our platform is good news, regardless of what's being discussed. So the easiest low hanging fruit is to go after the competition, and that's no different in other fields. You know, you see it happen in fast food all the time you see it happen in politics all the time you see it happen and you see it happen in video games you know if you look at the 90s and the advertising with sega sega was Mm -hmm. clearly inferior to nintendo uh look at them now and look at them now well i mean yeah but sega i mean sega in the united states like they had very little market share when it came to video game systems but then the genesis happened and they brought on new people and they they had a really brilliant marketing strategy that basically much of it was making fun of Nintendo. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you've seen it in other brands, too. Sony's done it. Um, I mean, everybody, to a degree, has done it. And uh, mm-hmm. that's just... Now, the way... I think the reason why it probably rubs you the wrong way, right? It, it likely rubs a lot of other people the wrong way, is that it's now being done instead of a commercial you're watching on television. It's a... It's a very pointed social media jab where social yeah. media is a lot more personal, you know. So yeah. it's it's very and it seems those sort of things seem kind of pedantic, um, and I agree with you. But again, they I, they're a startup; they probably don't have a huge uh, budget for marketing. So this is the low hanging fruit that they can get clicks, they can get retweets, they can get whatever going Engaging because them, yeah. they're generating a discussion. And like it or not, you got pulled right into it too. Yep. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I have more thoughts, but Nackers, if you want to hop in, um, um, you know, whenever I get into these, because these are always like selective interactions for me. Like before yeah. I go into it, I'm like, is this what I want to spend my like once a month? Sass on Twitter on. I'm like, yeah, mm. yeah. I'm like, you know what? You know what? I don't think I've given any sass on Twitter for like two months. Fuck yeah, I'm I'm getting into this. Um, It just, uh, I guess it just strikes me as like something that is that doesn't have to be. Because Mm -hmm. if it is the better platform, 
it will surpass. And the, the, the one thing that they don't have control over is what's going to succeed is where the people are at. And yeah. If you got, you have to build a reason for the people to come over and you just shitting on the other person and saying like, oh, look at these things that we don't have because all of, or they don't have all those things that Discord doesn't have right now. You're not, you're not going to patent like Discord. Yeah. You got to remember, out. dude, this is not gilded as a whole. This is just their marketing department or whoever right. is running their marketing. But it's going to It's affect- not their software engineers. It's not their, the people that do all their different stuff. They have no say in that. Now. The marketing department gets their overall strategy guidance, I would assume, from whoever's at the top. Right. So whoever's at the top that's given that guidance is probably maybe misguided in thinking that you can. Again, this is just an opinion. It's, you know, you just have to look at politics. Look who the last president was and what they made their They built their uh, campaign on, you know, antagonizing the opposition. So. I mean, it's it's a proven strategy that works. Now, is it what I think is a is it a very honorable or good strategy to employ? That's good. No, I don't think so. Is it effective? It's yeah. like they there's a there's a there's a book. Um, and now I'm trying to remember the the name of it. Oh, the Bible. Uh, no, <laughs> it's an old book. Uh, called uh, The Prince. Uh, by like Machiavelli. And he talks about in that book how you gain political power, mm-hmm. how to gain political power, and then how to maintain that political power. And a lot of that is the, like, the lessons of the book. It mentions like literally you know, stabbing people in the back and stepping on other people to get to the places you need to go. By yeah. It's, it's uh, the means to an end. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, it, it shouldn't matter what the, the means to an end are. And uh, I think that's this type of marketing strategy. It's just we're gonna blaze it down. We're gonna make a presence. Mm-hmm. Whatever happens, happens. And if you're and you got to look at it from this, I have no idea what the metrics or numbers are, but I am sure that their market share is probably got to be somewhere close to like what it was like when Sega was trying to enter the market against Nintendo. Oh yeah, everyone's got a fucking Discord server, right? Yep. So they're trying to take the nuclear approach to get as much attention as they can, whether that's good or bad. That would ju- that's just my thoughts um, off the cuff. Yeah, I'm looking. So I, I don't know a ton of uh, about Team Gilded. I've looked at them in the past, um, but I, and I do need to do a deep dive again to to take a look at what's really there. Um, and that, honestly, it's it's kind of their fault in a way because it's not being promoted to the extent where I it, the ripples are hitting me. Um, but that's even surprising, last, actually. Yeah, this last post that I saw. Was suggest- it was retweeted by them, but it was showing all of... Uh, it was a Discord post asking creators and moderators what features they would like. And it's a bunch of new features that Discord listed out. And the post was says, I've surely never seen these new original app ideas before with like a hmm face. Yeah. And I, it, to me, like, yeah, that's a little... Like, it's a little snide, right? It's like... It's a little it's like... Pe- uh, it's, it's pedantic. Petty. Yeah, it's yeah. It's very, very petty just... To, but so, it, it it garners clicks because the right, average right. social media person, we're right. not talking about the people probably listening to this podcast or whatever, but I know there's a lot of really fucking dumb shit that goes on in social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people love drama. They love there, the man. drama, yeah. They love it, man. They eat it up, you know? I, I think and that so the, the issue with this, this particular approach with this sort of product is that the differences aren't tangible to the uh, regular user. Like, let, let's look at AMD versus NVIDIA. There's a percentage bar that says, how many more frames are you going to get? Like, this right. is the thing that matters to you. And I think, like, with that sort of message that they just posted, is that these are features that exist on Gilded, right? That's what they're implying. These are features that exist on Gilded. But Discord is thinking about adding them, right? So Discord has the question if they should add these things and how interested people would be to have that as a feature on their channel or on their on their Discord um channel server whatever server. you call it yep um so what's weird what what that does to the person that's reading that that is the discord viewer right they're not looking at that like this is speaking to the gilded community the discord user doesn't really give a shit right they're like oh okay looks like gilded has these features but discord's interested Can in I adding say these. So I'll one just sit thing i'll just wait. real quick i'm yeah, really sorry to interrupt you but every time i hear the name gilded i keep thinking 
as a history teacher, I, I use this term a lot because it's the Gilded Age, you know, in the you know part of America, the late 19th century, uh, you know, Gilded Age time period, like early industrialization. And uh, that term to me is like such a negative term, like gilded. It's <laughs> like it literally means... Like that way, I know it's. I think isn't there a spell like G, like guild, like a like a lollipop guild? G U I L D E D. G yeah, G U I L D E D. I'm talking about what gilded, which sounds the same. It's 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 uh, whatever. Uh, what's the word synonymous? <laughs> sounds the same. Synonymous. Uh, no, it's synony- so, yeah, not a synonym. Yeah. It's a homonym. Cinnamon. It's a homonym. Sound uh, like homonym. it's pronounced the homonym. same. Yep. Fuck whatever. <laughs> I don't teach English anyway. Uh, gilded means something that's covered in gold, but underneath it, it's like shitty. You know what I mean? Like something that's gilded. Oh, that's why it's called the Gilded yeah. Age. Because on the outside, it looks like America's super wealthy and everything else. Mm-hmm. But that's on the backs of like, you know, all these, all this immigrant labor and all this other shit. People are really, really poor. And it's only a few people that have a lot of money. So right. when I think the term, every time I hear gilded, I just think to myself, what a shitty fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I definitely I, I don't, don't like, like it either. The name Gilded. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's funny. Actually, that's really interesting. I, I hadn't yeah. even made that. See, that that's because you have a more diverse vocabulary than I do, right? I think of guilds like the Thieves Guild in, in fucking Scotland. Yes. You know? That's what I think. That's what I think of, man. Fuck your guild, man. Don't I'm fuck thinking yourself, of, Jenny, uh, your I'm thinking vocab. of uh, late 19th century history. <laughs> the best history. The best. History. What were your but, other uh, thoughts, uh, Bishy? Uh, but yeah, it's just just to go back to what I said, they're not in the, all of this marketing. They're not obtaining any new fans, right? Which is what marketing should be positioned to do. All that they're doing is creating. Uh, it, it's it's like rallying yourself up. on your yeah, rallying up the people that already support you, right? Like having a post that does this. Unless people are looking for this that specific feature. They don't really give a shit of why they're going to change. All that that does is get the community that's already changed to rally behind the people that are that, that they're finding that have changed or swapped platforms. Right. And that's why I think it's a bad approach. It just makes you look petty. Right. In my opinion, it makes you look petty. And like I mentioned, like if you're a if you're a discord user, you're not going to change because you already or you're not going to swap over based on those feature be, features because discord is already planning on adding potentially some of those features or they don't matter to you. And and I, think as, that, I mean, as long as you're as it matters only to anyone, unless your name Tom, right? And uh, t- exactly. And to go back to the my original point, Tom Petty, Tom Petty, Richard Petty. I was thinking MySpace Tom top eight, Tom. Yeah, I was oh. thinking of Tom from that or from MySpace too. I was, I was like, going I Tom Petty. I was going to say Kyle because that's another recognizable Petty. I fucking hate Tom Petty. Really? So fucking much. <laughs> Why? I hate. All of his music. I hate his voice. I hate his fucking what is guitar wrong with sound. Tom Petty? I everything is wrong with Tom Petty. Wow, dude, you really feel strongly about. I this. have no musical background. I have no skills or knowledge that makes my value, my opinion, valuable or hold any weight. But I fucking hate hey, Tom you, Petty. Can you look? Can you look? Can at I Tom, ask Tom you Petty a question? on Google real quick? Just look at his look at his picture when it pops up. And you know, and this is the voice. While you were saying that, I'm looking at his picture that pops up. And this is what he's saying. And it's like, this is what I'm hearing. Like, ah, fuck you, knackers. I'm rich as fuck, dog. I don't give a shit. <laughs> also <laughs> dead. He's saying he won't back down. He will yeah. not back down. <laughs> uh, and I will back down. Uh, what, you, what were you going to say, Jimbo? Did you say earlier when I took a break, because I pulled my, when I went to go um, grab a fruit roll up and everything, I, I was listening to you guys on the on my phone. And you said something like, when you were cranky as a kid, your mom would tell you, like, shove a piece of turkey in your mouth? <laughs> okay. I mean, you took it to another... She wouldn't shove a piece of turkey in my mouth, but she would be like, go in the fridge and eat a slice of turkey or make yourself a turkey sandwich because that you were going to get protein that way and you were also going to become less cranky that way. Well, I mean, I'm... I think it's funny that you mentioned that because you already exhibit the same sort of behaviors, you know? What do you mean? When you she get upset blocked. with Weenie, you just shove a piece of little little <laughs> piece of meat in her mouth, right? Little, little piece of little piece of meat. She got sandwich meat, so it's like little little true little true something. little slices, little little something. I was, I will say, yeah, it is a little weird. Of, I'm sorry, of my mom I was trying to. I was trying to yeah, set. I, like I didn't it. quite slam dunk it. That was more of a layup <laughs> to the finish. Yeah, how does joke. it feel? 
How does it but feel I'll to have a great take... fucking joke in your mind and to deliver it and it just fucking Look, I was flopped. trying to do all that on the fly and I didn't test it beforehand, so I feel pretty good about it. Do you know? Good. Do you know how often I write a tweet and then don't post it because I'm like, ah, <laughs> fuck. Like this is not worded right. This, yeah, I'm, getting canceled. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting canceled if I type this. If yeah. I tweet this, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Daily, well, well, as a did, did you have any more points, Bishy? Um, I think, I think the main thing that I take away from this sort of marketing is that usually it hyper focuses on the other features that it has, and it doesn't tell the story to the viewer that's new to this sort of pr product that uh, of what the product has like because a majority i'm sure of what gilded is is what they share in common with discord so i can't that's tell you what gilded is because all i know is they shit on discord yeah and <laughs> they are they're, they're 19th century english word fucking what are they doing no. here? 100 no, it, transparency they are hmm. exactly what discord is at, it, at its yeah. infrastructure with a shit ton of really cool features like yeah. right. with wiki and forum posts and document hosting media channels right. um sub directories so like you jimmy you could have a sub server for just star wars shit and people could join the middle age stream server and then choose to only subscribe mm -hmm. to the streaming part of Middle Age Stream and not subscribe to the other part. So there's a there's yeah. a ton of really fun. We did. I spent like three or four hours on stream just testing Gilded features with a bunch of people from the community, and yeah. it's awesome. It is really awesome, which pains me because I see all this stupid petty social media shit and Brilliant. Tom. Fucking Tom Petty bullshit. Fucking Richard, man. Fuck your NASCAR, man. Fucking <laughs> Kyle. So, so I think, but that's that's the thing, though. Like, all those bonus features are great, and they're really nice, right, for, for us. But their best features are still what they share in common with Discord. Their core functionality yeah. is, as a company, is the best thing that they produce. And it just happens to be what they share with Discord. And when they have a message like this... That whole story is completely lost, right? It's like we share that with Discord, so you don't even consider those things. It makes you, in your mind, as a viewer or like a, as a consumer, you have the correlation, like what we used to do at, at Replay. It's like, oh, okay, so it's an action camera that I can mount to things, right? What is it different about it? Oh, just the form factor, the build quality, the, the video quality. So the only thing that really matters there to the end user is how easy it is to use, how much easier it was to use uh, than the GoPro. The UI on the app was way better. The battery life was way better. The video quality was better, right? So those are things that they could have tangibly marketed, but they didn't. They were just like, "Oh, well, we have a great camera, and ours is better because yeah. it's better." The, the go and they showed they had like um, videos showing like uh, the impact of a, a replay camera smashing into something because it was an aluminum housing, and then a GoPro, and then they were showing like GoPros could be crushed easily, and ours is hard as metal, yeah. and which is like it's super cheese. People don't give a fuck about that shit. Right. Yeah, because if it breaks, they're just gonna buy another. <laughs> yeah, and they did the same thing where that that um that these guys are doing now, Gilded is doing now, where they go and find like the random fucking butt fuck nowhere nobody that has used their product, and they're like, hey, this guy switched, and now he's using Replay XD instead of GoPro. That guy's a legend. And then all the Replay guys are in the background are like, fuck yeah, that's another Replay XD fucking GoPro's garbage. It's a but, fucking corny man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's super fucking corny, and that's exactly how how it was. So. Yeah, hopefully, you know, it's good to know that they're they're vocal and they're creating a, a stir. Maybe they're on their last leg. Let's hope not. I hope Gilded sticks around, but I need to... I would like to know, like, I, I should be hearing about them more through social channels. And that's what they need to focus on. They're tweeting more than GoXLR, that's for sure. <laughs> but it's <laughs> only if you follow them, right? So they're not getting engagement. The only thing that I've heard about Gilded is through you. Otherwise, it would be like... 10 months until I play WoW again. That is for honest, Discord integration. That's crazy to me. I can't believe that I'm yeah. the only person that is like talking yeah. about it in your in your sphere. And I hmm. avidly play World of Warcraft. I used to. Right. And you know what? Right. When we were doing the deep dive, Gippy um, was one of the dudes who was heavy into World of Warcraft. And he yep. saw the value of what Gilded could bring his guild. Um, mm -hmm. He's like, oh, man, I'm going to I'm going to see if our, our community wants to switch over to this because this thing would be fucking awesome. So. Mm -hmm. It's got potential, and it, Gilded, I'm not shitting on you. I'm only peeing on you. you. I baby. still want you to be on the podcast so I can talk with you. But anyways, um, last but not least, and this isn't really a deep dive topic, uh, more so just kind of like a reminder to the to the Twitch community. So 
Uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, a pretty large creator in the space tweeted about a company called Pally GG. And the tweet reads, hey, content creators, listen up. I'm working with a new platform that is free to use. Red flag! And helps you pay attention or helps you pay attention, <laughs> helps you pay your moderators a split mm-hmm. of your tips. It's called Pally GG and it's really neat. You know what else? You know what I hate more than Tom Petty? That mm-hmm. GG is has become like the suffix of of companies in the gaming sphere. I fucking hate companies, it. not good companies because they would just buy a dot com. Right. What the hell? Right. Um, and it's really great. It lets you pick splits for you and your mod team so that when people choose to tip you, you can automatically give it. Uh, you can automatically have it go directly to your mod team. I personally cannot afford to pay my mods, but I also think that this is a wonderful way for my community to support the team behind the streams as well. They accept credit cards and PayPal in case we were wondering about payment options. They also have alerts and can show up on your stream all customizable. So as of late, the very first thing that I do whenever I see a creator tweet out about a company or a service or whatnot, Mm -hmm. I immediately go to the terms of service and go, hmm, especially Hmm. if it's being broadcasted as free. So under their terms of service, under fees and payment, they say our service is completely free to use when it's like, okay, you are facilitating payments through your platform and no, there's no fees or whatever. Okay. So within the first paragraph, it says you may be required to purchase or pay a fee to access some of our services. Further down, you agree to pay all charges or fees at the prices then in effect for your purchases. And so I responded, are you or anyone at Pally GG able to shed light on this part of the terms of service? Website landing page says free to use. So what fees may we be subject to monthly annual based on income revenue threshold? And their response was, oh, wait, no, that was that was a response to something else. Oh, here it is. We don't charge any fees for streamers to use the service. Thanks for calling this out. We'll update our terms to clarify. Some of this language is aimed towards tippers to ensure there aren't any issues with their payment. I was like, okay, so that's it. That's interesting. Um, Rini from Pretzel Rocks also asked, also curious if they have protection for chargebacks. Uh, There's a lot of potential for a service like this. I'm excited to see where this goes. And their response to that, which I very much respect, they were honest. I'll be candid. I don't have a perfect answer for you right now, but this is one of our biggest things we're talking about. We know there Mm -hmm. are bad actors. We want to get this right. Um, It's why you see some of this language and why we're limiting access. We're figuring it out. Mm -hmm. So my, my first thought is, when it first went public on social media, you realize that your terms of service needed to be tweaked a little bit to reflect your company in its current state. It's probably because they had an old, it's legally speak, they hadn't updated that shit. Yeah, yeah. I'll give them that. I'll give them yeah. that. It's um, an easy oversight. Right. So I, I do want to get your guys' feedback on this, on the service, not not that you might have any, You're but... You're the asshole. I, I, am I fucked up? I'm fucked up! <laughs> One of the things I, I re, I've reiterated this so many times in this podcast, you as content creators and you as viewers, when you see people that are peddling this stuff, whether it's good or bad, do your homework, open up the terms of service, read through it, read the fine print, see if there's a hashtag ad, see if there's a hashtag sponsored. Is there any tie in between the person that's um, promoting the service and the service itself? Because I cannot count on my hands how many times that i've gone through it's like oh this is a free service we're doing this all we want to do is help empower streamers and then you go and look at the tos and it's like oh my god this is some next level shit um so i i just i always want to reiterate when you see this kind of stuff read don't just hop onto it you know there's so many companies in the streaming space that have come out with new services and especially when it comes to money when there is money passing through their platform, um, th- th- there was a, a service that was like, hey, we're better than PayPal. We don't charge any fees. You're good against chargebacks and and blah, 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 blah. And then I haven't fucking heard from them since. I've not seen them at all. And it makes you think, why? So any any thoughts on this at all? No company can operate without capital. 
<clears throat> or without selling something. So even Streamlabs, Stream Elements, they're making money somewhere. And whenever it's a they quote free, I really hate that. I hate the fact that there's a bunch of workarounds. Um, and I'll go back to my Replay XD experience. We we were able to say that our cameras were made quote made in America because we shipped parts over from Taiwan and built them in San Jose. Right, ninety mm-hmm. percent of the manufacturing happened offshore, and we assembled them in a in a building. And yeah, we they have a rules for that where you can say that as long as they basically put the final part together <laughs> in the U.S. Yeah. You can say made in the U.S. Yeah, that. which which I I I feel like this free, like totally free, completely free, free to use, free like. It's such vague language, and I fucking hate it. Whenever I actually see, like, uh, hey, this is a totally free-to-use platform, that it's like it's not totally free-to-use. It's like Robinhood got in trouble for this because they said, oh, our platform is completely free. You don't get any charges for, uh, for buying or selling stocks. I don't know what the specifics are, but then they found out that they're making a um, commission on everything, so it's not completely free, right? Like that yeah, they're making is, money on transact because they're selling it for the higher bid price on those yeah. stocks and shit. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, it, to me, I hate when I see that shit. And, and honestly, like, uh, I, I remember seeing the tweet and I didn't respond to it because it was one of those things that like, uh, like the spiritual me, right. The new spiritual me where I'm sitting, scrolling through Twitter, I'm about to type something. I'm like, fucking here I go. And then I'm just like, you know what? I'm, I'm above this. I'm a good person now. Right. I'm going to go play Valorant and scream at children because they're not doing the right thing. That's <laughs> when, like me seeing this stuff, I'll, most of the time, I just write it off, and I'm like, okay, this is bullshit. We'll see if it gains traction. If people start using it, I'll take a look at it. I usually don't pay any sense to any ad con, to like anything that's hashtag sponsored or hashtag ad, especially coming from streamers, because streamers, we've got a pretty bad, even the top streamers, we got a pretty bad repertoire with, with marketing companies. Like, we have no good sponsors. Like, there are no good sponsors in the, in the streaming space, if, from what I've seen. Like, Mountain Dew is in the space, but like, Look at look at G Fuel. Like that company fucking sucks, man. They're selling some <laughs> dog shit. And people I think are it's just because it it's just now becoming Twitch and streaming is just now yep. becoming uh uh Mainstream. notable to a lot of other brands out there in the in the world. I don't think it's it's just because it's still relatively new to the to the ad space and, and yeah, yeah. uh I do think that in the next couple of years you're gonna start seeing a lot more sponsorships from all different types of companies on Twitch. Um, I think it's going to become more and more common. I really do. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, I, I tend to stay away from anything that's promoted in the in the realm of streaming or like a, a new company that's entered the space that wants to solve something. Especially when it comes to like uh, processing of fees and donations and mm-hmm. subscriptions and stuff like that. I mean, we've seen a lot of it with um, with like Patreon popping up, and then all of the other companies that fizzled out over time that were just me too companies or copycat companies well um, it's like twitch basically shut down remember game wisp yeah yeah, like, yeah game wisp was a big thing until twitch opened up game wisp was pretty much done after the affiliate program started yep. because game wisp was what people used before the twitch affiliate program mm-hmm. yep. if you wanted to uh, subscribe to your streamer you could have special emotes and everything else and yeah, that was Game Wisp. And then that pretty much, I don't know if it still exists or not, but probably not. I would imagine most of their markets dried up. Yeah, yeah, that's... um, It's crazy how that that has totally fucking changed. Like, the, the whole money side of Twitch has really flipped. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, well, let's. I got nothing else, so let's hop into the Q&A super quick, and then we'll uh, close this up. So, question from Middle Age Stream... Yeah. When are Boba and Lo- oh. Leroy going to get a brother or sister kitty or puppy? Uh, I so badly. I've never had my own dog. I've only ever had a dog that my parents got or, you know, Weenie brought Boba. And obviously Boba's like my dog, but he's not yeah. really yeah. my dog. True. Um, yeah. Weenie's but, dog, but also your dog, kind of. Yeah, exactly. I'm like step stepdad, like right. twice so adopted. Step dog. You know, yeah, step, you're a step dog. Step dog. So I definitely really want a fucking dog. Um, But as somebody who often works 10 to 12 hours a day and Mm -hmm. then streams the other four to five or is other working, I have to make sure that it's fair for me to get a dog and to put in the time to it. Because Weenie obviously would have absolutely no problem with with training a dog. She's home all the time. She would absolutely love a puppy. But I don't want to get a dog to get trained by 
someone else. You it'll know, love like her right. more than it'll love you. Is right. Really and I can't right. I can't fucking stand <laughs> for that. And Weenie did a A plus amazing job training Boba. The dog is fucking amazing. But like if I'm gonna get a dog, I want to make sure that I have the time to create a good bond with the dog. Sure. Oh, and that's the right attitude. Man. Could I do it? Probably, but yeah. um, you know, in the off chance that I'm like, oh my god, this is just so much work. I just I don't ever want to get to that point. So we'll see, we'll see. I, a Fair golden enough. retriever puppy would just be fucking amazing mm. right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, question from Hellhound Jibbles: Have you fallen in any rose bushes lately? Not since the last time. No, thankfully. <laughs> I feel thankfully. like that's a weekly question, right? Yeah, it is. I, I, it's been a few months. I've been yeah. I've been okay. I've been good. We should get you a little rose bush emo. Ooh, I like it. Be nice. I'll put it on my channel if you want to. Tier three, yeah, yeah. tier three. Uh, second and last question from Hellhound: Thoughts on OnlyFans and what are your accounts there for science? Of course, <laughs> I don't. I don't have any accounts on OnlyFans. I think most OnlyFans are geared. I think a lot of OnlyFans. I don't know if it's completely this, but isn't it mostly geared toward like kind of like lewd photos and stuff? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, I or straight up porn. I mean that too. Hey, I didn't. If that's what you're into, go for it, man. I have no problem yeah. with it. You know, shit. I mean, if if I if I thought that I could make money selling pictures on an OnlyFans, there's a very real chance that I would do it. So, but I don't think I would make any money. I don't think anyone yeah. wants to see any of this. <laughs> so, if, so, if, I'd pay for that. Five would you pay for? You know? Would you put feet picks up? If you knew people would pay for them, just feet. Nobody wants to see my feet, man. You do not know that, man. You yeah, you're probably that, right. There, there, was, there was a gentleman in the Metro Detroit area who would go around. He would find lo- like landscapers, and he would basically say, I'm in a fraternity, and I have to get videos of me smelling people's feet in order to get into the fraternity just to smell people's feet. So he would grab their boots, mm. put them to his face, and smell. Yo, big yikes. And he would just walk around. He would just do that all day. They called him the serial foot sniffer. That's uh, weird. People who like feet, I don't think they discriminate. I think they like all no, feet. They That's like weird, feet, man. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Um, yeah, my, my opinion on OnlyFans is... Uh, Cool, man. I think it's a lot like Twitch, though. I think that um, the people like there's a majority of the people that use OnlyFans as a platform don't actually make that much money using it. They might make a couple hundred bucks a month like most like small, tiny streamers. Um, But I don't think that they're like it's kind of like Twitch. It's it's a slippery slope and it's sort of dangerous because you're spending a lot of time. You're spending a majority of your time doing this thing and it's not necessarily paying off. Right. Or it, it might not pay off in the long run. So OnlyFans, I think, could also be a bit more sketchy in that sense, just based on like, uh, yeah, I mean, you're giving out some a really personal thing potentially, right? Like maybe, uh, maybe that matters to you. Maybe you don't really give a shit, right? Like maybe you don't care if there's a bunch of PP pics of your PP or feet on on the internet. Maybe you don't care. Feet. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, it's a good thing, and uh, it it could also be dangerous though. So use it, uh, you know. Don't go and start an oldie fans just because you heard that a bunch of people couldn't make a ton of money, <clears throat> Twitch and Ninja, and then all of a sudden, you know, expose a bunch of nude photos of yourself and make only a couple hundred bucks for for your time. You I'm know, sure get, there's a very attractive young lady out there that's listening to this podcast right now and heard your words and uh, is thinking, you know what? You really spoke to me, Bishop GP. Thank hey, you. Hey, man. I'm here Thank for you. you. I, are you Thank is this your inner? This is your inner spirit voice? Jimmy? No, no, yeah. I'm just saying that there it's very possible that that uh, there could no, be no, someone listening to yeah. this right now. You never know. But you know, I think I think know. it's like it's like streaming, right? Like streaming has a huge time and money investment and only no, fans I get what has you're a, saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, you're, you're right. You're right. I'm just hey, busting man. your chops. Hey, man, uh, I um man. I have no qualms with anybody who creates an OnlyFans, right? If that's your thing, yeah. dope. The only thing that I worry about and it's this is a white man's opinion and should have absolutely no effect on anybody ever. The only thing that I worry about is like the same people that get into porn when they're like 18 or 19 years old. And then like two or three years down the road, they're like, Oh shit. It, yeah. I, this isn't really what I wanted to do. And then now there's it all didn't this turn into a career path. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So there are plenty of people who like cosplay and lewd that, that is mm-hmm. their, that is their passion. They're going to do it for fucking ever. Just like there's yeah, people yeah. in porn who have done it for 15 or 20 years. I, I worry about the people that see the paycheck 
um, yeah. and and get into it, and then they end up regretting it later. But again, like that's their that's that affects my life none. That no, that's yeah. your life. You do whatever the fuck you want. Um, and I think that there is past the your body's on the internet. I worry about the psychological impact of like, you know, we have such a real issue of parasocial relationships, right? On yeah, Twitch yeah. of like stalkers. Like Jimmy and I. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I feel like that is only amplified by lewd content. Um, whether that makes people more attached to you as a creator or less. Um, but again, those are the, when you sign up for that, those are your consequences to bear. That's has nothing to do with yeah. me. Yeah, dude. I don't, like I said, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any dog in this hunt, so to speak. Cause I'm a, uh, I'm not, I don't think anyone's signed up for my OnlyFans content, so. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. Mm. Two on this podcast. Mm. All right, motherfuckers. Well, that's going to be a podcast under two hours. How do you feel? I feel good. That's, this is a good one. That's good. That was a good job. We had kept I, I, it flowing, kept it going. Nice move. Mm-hmm. All and it was a around. double podcast day for you, Jimbo, so. Yeah. That no, was good. It was good. Good shit. Um, Bye, let's wrap this up. Bishop, what do you got for me? My name is Bishop GP, aka Helia Bishop. I always do that backwards, but you can find me on Twitch at Bishop Was Here, or sorry, Bishop GP, and on Twitter at Bishop Was Here. I'm actually streaming again a little bit here and there. Uh, yeah. Not too consistent. I looked at my stats and I streamed as long when I was streaming. I streamed as long as I've taken a break now. So now it's another season of getting back to it. So yeah, I've been having a good time, just chilling, playing Valorant, and uh, and hanging out. Probably won't play too much more Valorant on stream, but uh, yeah, it's been a good time. I actually, Jimmy, uh, with that last little uh zinger there playing valorant on stream i wanted to mm-hmm. let you know that i i did queue with uh the lollipop guild um a bunch of 12 year olds and man oh man do i feel for you and your job now uh <laughs> 20 minutes or eight rounds of playing with those guys i know what you have to deal with from day to day and my god uh god bless in, your soul sir in what in what game valorant in valorant yeah it was yeah, yeah it was pretty you were in terrible, a you were in a group with a bunch of teenagers yeah, they were they were morons. Okay, yeah. that was the best way that I could. Yes, ex- I yep. I do I do understand, dude. I yep. Understand. So I, I feel for you, man. Yep. Well, uh, my name is uh, Jimmy, aka Middle Age Stream. You can catch me on Twitch at Middle Age Stream, Middle Age Stream on Twitter, no D. Uh, I stream Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays around eight o'clock Central Standard Time. And this week it is. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get back into ba- Batman or not. I, I'm waiting till how I see how I feel on Tuesday because that NES game is driving me fucking crazy, dude. So I, <laughs> I may have to pull a a freaking white flag on Batman because it was I, I just kind of played it on a whim, not really expecting this game to be as hard as it, as big of as an endeavor as it is. Yeah, and I didn't really have any real impetus to beat it. Like it wasn't like it was Battle Toads. Like it was this unicorn that I've been trying to beat. Right? Like Batman, I don't really give a shit about if I beat it or not. But the pride, prideful part of me is like, are you gonna let this fucking NES game just beat your ass? You know. <laughs> and then the other part of me is like, you're getting angry an hour into playing it. Maybe you should play something else. So uh, we'll see what wins out on Tuesday. We'll see. My name is Knackers. You guys can find me on this very Twitch channel or on Ooh. Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I, I'm i having so much a fun on TikTok, dude. Views, a million views. A million fucking views. Um, or have you hit a million views already? No, no. I, I think I'm like 100,000 Nearly. Nearly. Uh, but it's, it's fucking, it's fun, man. I'm, I'm, I'm still enjoying it very much. And if you aren't on it, stay away. Mm-hmm. It will capture your soul and it will not let go. My wife's always... The- on the fucking Tic Tacs. The Tic Tacin, man. Yeah. Tic Tacin, baby. Mm-hmm. Um, I, because I forgot to take off, because right now I'm doing three weeks on, one week off, three weeks on, one week off. I forgot to take my last one week off. So this next upcoming week, I'm going to be taking it off. Uh, so no streams Monday through Saturday. I don't think I'm going to schedule a podcast for Sunday. We'll see, though, depending on if the person accepts. Uh, but most likely, no streams for me for the next week. I will be back next Tuesday. Um, as always, Tuesdays are uh, talks dedicated to tech streaming. And then Thursdays and Sundays are both podcast nights with a little bit of tech talk after as well. Um, with that is it. Thank you guys very much for hanging out for the Crocs and Hot Pockets podcast. 
It is awesome to see all of you here. For all the audio listeners in the future, you're fucking great. Thank you so much for supporting the cast. And uh, we'll see you guys around, okay? Goodbye! Bye. Is he still going? He's still going. Your mic has been muted the entire time, Jimmy. <laughs> we didn't. He- we did not hear any of that. Just, I, it's Discord it hates when you. Yeah, yeah. This, you're the Discord. When I go, fucking... go high pitched, it doesn't like it. When you go high, they go low. Yeah. Maybe we they should uh, switch to gilded. <gasps> Next podcast. I don't want to go back to the 19th century. <laughs> All right, everybody on three, cover the lens on your camera, and we're gonna do a dramatic end stream. Okay, three, okay, two. What? Bang energy. Mm.